bless you. Bless you for being here. I'm so thrilled you're Thank here. You. And, Daryl, we are honoured. I know that you don't do a lot of late-night talk shows. Yes. We, are, we are absolutely thrilled that you've taken the time yeah. to be here today. Thank you. <laughs> do you have... Is there anything you need? Daryl, can I get you anything? Do you have everything you need? Um... You could write me a check. <laughs> Say no, well, you know what? Anybody <laughs> in the room can write me a check. Okay. He's taking checks. We'll no, do that. I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm very good. Well, Thank we're you. thrilled that you're here. Uh, Thank you. you. We, we're all huge fans of both of yours. And Kerry, I know that yeah. you've been a fan of Delroy's work for Forever. a long time. Well, what was it? When, what did you first see Delroy in that you that moved you and, and you thought, oh, I want to work with this guy? The first thing was um, a Spike Lee film called The Autobiography of Malcolm X. Yes. <laughs> He's heard me talk about this before, but he has an incredible arc in the film. Yeah. The film is really like in three or four acts, and he plays the same character, but at two very different times in his life. And at one time, he's like sexy, drug dealing, amazing, powerful, incredible, charismatic guy. And at the other end of the film, he's fallen on hard times. And I just was really blown away. He really taught me what was possible or even required of us as actors. I mean, Spike Lee essentially launched your movie career, right, Delroy? Would, would that be fair? And then, obviously, That's... most recently, you're in De Five Bloods. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your performance in that is incredible. Yeah. And you, I imagine you spent a lot of time... You. you spent a lot of time with Spike. What is it like when you get together off set? It's... Spike is very focused. Mm -hmm. And usually, when we're working together, it's very, very work oriented because it's it's all about the project that we're working on i think rather than work with spike lee i'd like to go to a knicks game with him so, oh wow i'm always jealous of whoever sat courtside with spike lee i'm like oh that just looks like a great a hang. show within the that show that is a great hang yeah, yeah yeah have you been have you has he taken you along to no, those games yet I, no no i have oh. not been but 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 oh, but, what? but what? i got the prince tickets man what what do you mean prince what prince. do you mean prince. when when was this prince uh, Radio City. Wow! Yeah, right, right. When, was, uh, when did this Prince was, play Radio this City? Was the, he, this was the summer we were about to do Crooklyn, which right. is the second oh, film that I did. Another incredible film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I got to, Spike got me tickets to Prince. Uh, in fact, two sets of tickets. We saw Prince at Radio City. And then maybe two, three nights later, we saw him uptown at the Apollo. Oh, wow. That was, that was Spike. So I, don't, I didn't get the Knicks tickets, but I got the Prince tickets. Yeah, I'm going to scratch this. I've, I've already got rid of my Knicks. I'd like to go to a concert. You know what? It's so funny because I... So I saw the autobiography of Malcolm X in high school. In college, I was in a test screening. I was, like, one of the kids that they gave out tickets from right. Brooklyn. Oh, wow. And oh, so wow. I saw you again in college. Oh, there were wow. all these pivotal oh, wow. moments in my life where I saw Delroy, which I think is why I was, like, this character... To, for him to play my dad just felt so necessary. But you're you're very big on this, and you're you are clearly very good at it, at sort of manifesting things that you I want try. to happen. Because is it true? When you were in high school, you yes. manifested the idea of working with Spike Lee. I did. So we Which, we found out that they were shooting Malcolm X around the corner from my high school, and we were reading the book. And so my English teacher took a bunch of us to Central Park where they were filming, and um, we somehow got past security. My English teacher was like, "We're reading it, and we have this young actress." at the school and she really wants to meet you and so I went up to him and I said Spike my name is Carrie and I swear one day we're gonna work together and he was like whatever kid and then when, when I was able to work with him on a film called She Hate Me I said Spike do you remember when you were in Central Park and that girl came up to you and she said she's... he was like nah because yeah. <laughs> I guess for me it was like you only meet Spike Lee once but for him so many young people so many young black people in particular are like working with Spike is the dream so I'm sure, sure he heard that 50 times a day but I only got to say it to him once. I think that that's really instructive about who Kerry Washington is. Yeah. From the standpoint of being, having the ability to manifest mm. stuff and make it, make it so. Mm. And that's one of her gifts. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. It is. <laughs> and Daryl, you are a brilliant stage actor, uh, a brilliant stage actor. Well, what's, the, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you when you've been on stage during a live show? Oh, my God. Um, okay. Opening night, uh, I did a play called, uh, Joe Turner. Where do I look? Do I look at the camera or look at the audience? <laughs> you can look at me, Whatever you can look want. anywhere you want. All right, okay. You're Delray Linda, you can look okay. wherever you want. all right. So, um, <laughs> yes, a brilliant August Wilson play called Joe Turner's Come and Gone. A mm. brilliant, brilliant piece of work. Opening night on Broadway. Mm. And the climactic scene 
where in my character, I played a character named Harold Loomis, mm -hmm. who's looking for his wife. Uh, my wife was played by Angela Bassett. Mm. Um, she did the thing. She did the thing. <laughs> she did the thing. Um, and I have to uh, take out a knife at the end of the play, the climactic scene. I take out a knife and I cut myself across the chest. And uh, the it's a comedy. <laughs> rom com. Yeah. It's... Rom com. Yeah. So the, the knife had been preset in my in my coat. I had on a long coat. And I'm going and I'm talking and the climax, is, the climax of the play is happening and I reach for the knife. Oh. And my coat had a hole in it <gasps> and the knife that had been preset had fallen out of the pocket. What did you do? The, this is what I did. <laughs> we didn't rehearse Let, that, I promise. <laughs> swear to God. Let me tell you what happened. Um, <laughs> So I, I reach for the knife and, and the knife is not there. And I turned, the, the, the scene was in the kitchen and I saw a knife that was not the prop knife. Oh no. I picked up the knife that was in the kitchen oh. and I cut myself, we didn't get the effect of the blood, but I cut myself and acted my way out of it and I made sure that the audience knew that that knife was. That's Delroy Linda. That ended it better than I thought. Now, Kerry, I a few years ago, so we're talking about manifestation. Yes. You tweeted, Dear animators, looking for black voices? Oh, wow. I'm a veil. And who responded? The, the Simpsons. Simpsons responded. You're now a recurring character on the show. Yes. How did this feel? It's incredible. It's so much fun. I think she's adorable. I think she's super cute, so I love that. Um, it's great to do something that my kids can watch, because yeah, right. a lot of the stuff I do is not appropriate. Like, on our show, I had to tell them there's bad words and naked ladies. Right. Um, yeah. But this is, this is something that they can watch and enjoy, and I love doing it. I'm basically... My mother is a retired educator, so I'm basically doing my mom's voice as the character. And, Tara, you also voiced a character. This is you, uh, and uh, <laughs> this is your character <laughs> on The Simpsons. Was this fun? Sexy. It's kind of sexy. Of course. It was. It, I have to tell you, I had not... The Simpsons was not on my radar. I, I right. was not aware how popular until I did that. Mm. And when I did that, I got instant credit from my nieces and nephews in yes. Philly. Yes. Oh, Uncle D, you did The Simpsons. You made it. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 That's when I became aware how hugely popular. Always uh, good to play a character who can swap their moustache for their eyebrows and no one would know. <laughs> That's what I like about it. Stick around. <laughs> what will you see when we come back, everybody?